Let me remind you again what we are doing. So, we are doing ground state perturbation field. So, it essentially means that this is the ground state of the Hamiltonian, physical Hamiltonian. So, we are looking at exact ground state and we are trying to find out how the exact ground state energy can be approximated by perturbation field. So, that is what is called the ground state perturbation field. So, we had uh, very quick quickly I will just give you the formula. We had partitioned H as H naught plus V, where eigenfunction solutions of H naught were known. Right? So, whenever I am writing superscript 0, it means they are the solutions of H naught and I is the different states. So, of course, I is 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. So, the E00 is the lowest energy, so I can write E00, sorry, E less than or equal to E10, etc. So, this is an order. Then what we said is that the correction to the ground state at the first order. So, every time I am writing the superscript, remember superscript is the order and the subscript is the ground or excited state. So, when I am writing psi 0 1, so that means it is a first order correction to the ground state. E 0 1 is the first order correction to the ground state etcetera. So, my actual E 0 will be E 0 0 plus E 0 1 plus E 0 2 etcetera, right. And the same thing goes for psi 0, okay. So, this is of course known. So, these are the things that we have to find out. So, we already know that E01, what is the formula? You take psi 0, 0, which is the ground state eigenfunction of H0 from here, and then take the average value of V with respect to the psi 0, 0. So, that is your E01. So, that is a formula which you did quite some time back, okay. And then in the last class, we also wrote down the equation for the second order. And from there we found that in the same manner you can calculate E02 as psi 00 V psi 01. Second order correction we cannot still get because we need to know what is psi 01. So far we have not done told you how to calculate the wave function corrections. So psi 01 is something that we have to evaluate, psi 00 is known. Remember, psi 0 1 is not known because the eigenfunctions of H naught are psi 0 0, etc., Hartree Fock and determinants and so on. So, psi 0 1 is something that we have to find out. To do that, I also remind you the two equations that we wrote. One is first order perturbation equation. So, this into psi 0 1. So, this is the thing that we have to find out plus V minus E 0 1 psi 0 0 equal to 0. Remember, this is the first order equation. I hope all of you can write it. It is a first order perturb Schrodinger equation H minus E psi equal to 0, okay. So, and the second order equation was similarly H naught minus E 0 0 psi 0 2 plus V minus E 0 1 psi 0 1 minus E 0 2 psi 0 0 equal to 0. Right? So, these are the two equations that we had written in the last time and we told you that each of this equation, if I project with psi 0, 0 star and integrate, then from this equation I get this, from this equation I will get this because this term becomes 0. So, you directly get E 0 1 equal to psi 0 0 V psi 0 0. Similarly, here this term is 0, then you have psi 0 0 V psi 0 1 and E naught 1 into psi 0 0 psi 0 1 that is 0 because of intermediate normalization. So, that is equal to E naught 2. So, each of these equations have been obtained by projection 
So, you project these equations to psi 0 0 star and integrate, multiply and integrate. So, you get these two equations. We are also explicitly working with intermediate normalization. That means, all ground state corrections is are orthogonal to the 0th order state for all k 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Corrections, only corrections of course. So, that is why that is why this term psi 0, 0, psi 0, 1 becomes 0. So, you have only psi 0, 0, v psi 0, 1 which is equal to enough e when I multiply and integrate. So, this is this is something that we have done so far till the last class. So, I want to remind you. Now, our task will be to evaluate psi 0, 1, okay. So, we have written an expression of E naught 2, but this expression is not useful unless I know this. Because so far, I do not know how to get the first order correction to the wave function. We are only talking of correction to the energy. However, I have an equation which involves psi 0, 1. So, I have to use this equation to obtain the actually psi 0, 1. Okay. This was not used before because I only multiplied with psi 0, 0 star and if I multiply with psi 0, 0 star this becomes 0. So, regardless of this the integral is 0. So, I did not need to know psi 0, 1 to get E naught 1. Okay. So, now this is what we will do today. All right. So, I will leave those equations here. Note that my eigenstates of H naught are completely known. So, that is something that I want to remind you that H naught is an Hamiltonian whose eigenfunctions are completely known. Please be comfortable with the notations, okay. So, whenever I am writing superscript 0, I remind you the eigenstates of H naught, they are completely known and these i's are different states. So, i equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. In our case, when i equal to 0, what is psi 0, 0? That is Hartree Fock wave function, right. I just remind you when H naught is sum of the Fock operator, psi 0, 0 was Hartree Fock, but we have to now improve the Hartree Fock. All determinants, MCN determinants are eigenstates of H naught. So, they belong to the space of psi i 0. I am writing the equation generally, but I am just throwing you back to Hartree Fock perturbations that all singly excited, doubly excited, etcetera determinants were eigenstates of H naught. So, this is something that I fully know. I know complete eigenstate of H naught in a basis, okay. But let us not worry about, worry about that right now. So, I have the entire spectrum, eigenvalue spectrum that is completely known. I am now going to evaluate psi 0 1, right. When I evaluate psi 0 1 which is a ground state correction, I first note the intermediate normalization. The intermediate normalization says that when k equal to 1, the psi 0 1 are orthogonal to psi 0 0, right. That means, if I expand psi 0 1 in terms of these states which are complete state set of functions, I must ensure that the psi 0 1 does not include psi 0 0 because it is orthogonal. I hope you realize what is orthogonal. The coefficient comes as an overlap. Since it is orthogonal, the coefficient must be 0. So, obviously, if I expand psi 0 1 and this is something that we will do, we will expand psi 0 1 as a linear combination of all psi 0 k, okay, with a linear combination coefficient c k. I will call this c k 1. Since all these psi k, psi k zeros are known, I can expand psi 0 1 as a linear combination of all psi k 0 except k not equal to 0. Why k not equal to 0? Because I have to enforce the intermediate normalization. So, because psi 0 1 is orthogonal to psi 0 0, I can expand except k not equal to 0. Is it clear? So, for example, when I do Hartree Fock perturbation, my first order correction to the wave function will not include Hartree Fock itself but in, it will include all other excited determinants. So, I am writing in a general way, okay, because it is supposed to be orthogonal to Hartree Fock. 
that is the intermediate normalization means. So, I first write this expansion in a general form, again I am writing the perturbation first in a general form, then we will put the Hartree-Fock perturbation theory. So, what I have to evaluate now is this coefficient. So, provided I know these coefficients, I know the first order correction because it is a linear combination of these determinants, okay. So, what are the coefficients? These coefficients, if you note, can be written formally as psi k 0, psi 0 1. I hope all of you agree because this is, these are all orthonormal states. So, the way to get the coefficients is to project psi 0 1 with one of the psi k 0. So, if I project with psi k 0, I make an expansion, it they will all become orthonorm, orthogonal except when the expansion includes k, only for that term it will survive, okay. So, just to show you again, so if I have psi k 0, psi 0 1, I expand the right hand side by a summation over L, psi L 0, CL1. Note that this one means it is a first order correction, okay. This k is of course this, this k. So, I am just using instead of k a dummy variable L, okay. So, L not equal to 0. So, it is very clear that these are orthonormal, there is a delta k L. So, this result is only CK1. So, only when L becomes equal to k, this survives, this becomes 1 and this becomes CK1. So, this is again usual quantum mechanics that the CK1 can be given as psi K0, psi 0 1. So, if I can find this quantity, then I know the coefficient of expansion and I know the entire psi 0 1. K will be all the states of H0 except K not equal to 0, right. I am, I am taking, these are my states which are coming here. These are the eigenstates of H0. So, I all eigenstates of H naught have superscript 0 and subscript is k. So, k is 0, k 0 means it is a ground state of H naught, okay. So, I am using all states of H naught except the ground state of H naught. Huh. So, wha wha how did you want to write this? Psi k here. That is kth order correction, which I do not know. What are the what are this what are the things that I know? I know this, right? I have I what are available me with me are all eigenstates of H naught. All eigenstates of H naught are written in this manner. That is what I have we have decided, and that is a simple, right? Huh. That is an assumption, intermediate normalization. That is an assumption. That is an assumption. I already said that the normalization is my choice and I explained in last class that if I do intermediate normalization, the full function will not be normalized, but that I can renormalize later. Right now it is my choice, okay. Is it clear? Any other question? So, we want to evaluate this. I am going to go back to the first order equation and try to evaluate this. Remember initially I projected to psi 0 0, okay, the ground state of H naught only which is the Hartree Fock. Now what I am going to do to evaluate this, I am going to project to all other psi k 0. So for example, I take this equation, I multiply by psi k 0 star and integrate. So what I will get psi k 0, H naught minus E naught 0 psi 0 1 plus psi k 0. So, V minus E 0 1 psi 0 0 equal to 0, right. So, I have taken this equation, first order perturbed equation and multiplied instead of psi 0 0 star with psi k 0 star. So, all other eigenstates of H naught which are known. So, one by one I am going to do for each k, okay. So, remember when I did psi 0 0, this guy became 0. But now if you see carefully, it will not become 0. 
because psi k 0 is an Eigen function of H naught, but the Eigen value is E k 0 not E 0 0. So, this will not become 0. So, can you find out what it this will become? This will now become E k 0 minus E 0 0 yes E 0 0 into psi k 0 psi 0 1. I hope you can see this because this is an Eigen function of H naught with an Eigen value E k 0 which is a real number. So, when I take complex conjugate this psi k 0 becomes conjugate no doubt and this number is real. So, it just becomes E k 0 psi k 0 minus E 0 0. So, that comes out and psi k 0 psi 0 1 remains here ok. So, I hope this small uh, thing all of you, can, you are able to do and as he rightly said this is what this is my target quantity. This is C k 1. C k 1 is exactly the projection of the first order wave function to the kth state of H naught ok. So, that is my target quantity. So, we will try to find this out, but let me complete this equation. So, then you have psi k 0 v psi 0 0 I am breaking this up minus E 0 1 psi k 0 psi 0 0. Note that this I will do for all k not equal to 0 because I am not interested in k equal to 0 because my psi 0 1 does not contain psi 0 0 right. So, I am only doing intermediate normalization ok. So, this becomes my equation. Let me keep this here. So, let me rewrite this equation again if you are not able to see. So, first I am projecting the first order equation with psi k 0 1 by 1. So, psi k 0 which is k not equal to 0 then h naught minus e 0 0 psi 0 1 plus psi k 0 v minus e 0 1 psi 0 0. Right. So, that is my projected equation. So, I have just rewritten that equation, whatever I wrote here, those who are not able to see from this side, ok. Then I said this is nothing but E k 0 <coughs> minus E 0 0 psi k 0 psi 0 1 plus psi k 0 v psi 0 0 minus e naught 1 ok. So, that becomes my equation. Now, my target quantity is this. This quantity is 0 because remember k not equal to 0 they are orthonormal because all these psi k 0's are eigenstates of H naught ok and they are since k is not equal to 0 they will be all orthogonal automatically to psi 0 0. So, this this term really cancels out. So, I can now find out what is C k 1 remember I said C k 1 is only this quantity right. So, what is C k 1 now? So, C k 1 will be psi k 0 v psi 0 0 divided by divided by E k 0 minus E 0 ok. So, let me analyze this term now because this into C k 1 is equal to this quantity. So, what we have essentially done is by projecting to the first order Schrodinger equation first with the psi 0 0 star which is the ground state of H naught we got an expression of E 0 1 ok and same thing we did for here we got E 0 2 
But now to calculate psi 0 1, we know that psi 0 1 can be written as a linear combination of all H naught states barring the ground state of H naught because we want psi 0 1 to be orthogonal to that as a part of the intermediate normalization, right? That psi 0 0 should not be included in psi 0 1. So we have expanded the psi 0 1 in terms of all states of H naught except k not equal to 0. The reason we are doing is that these are the states which are available to me, okay. You can of course argue that I could have expanded in any other complete set, but these are convenient set which is available to me, so I am expanding in this set. Then I notice that the CK1 is nothing but the overlap of this with psi k0. So if I can formally get this, then I am done. So to do that, I went back to this equation and projected with psi k0 and showed this equation or this equation from where I actually obtained CK1 as psi k0 0 V psi 0 0 divided by this. So let me write this what we have now got. So CK1 equal to psi K0 V psi 0 0 divided by E0 0 minus EK, okay. So each of these coefficient for psi K0 can be obtained in a very simple manner. So what, you, what is the prescription? Everything is superscript 0. If you look at the formula, everything is known. So if I want to calculate what is the contribution of psi k0 in the first order correction to the web function, first what I will do, I will take this perturbation matrix element between H0 eigenstate, ground state eigenstate with the kth eigenstate of H0, the kth one that I am trying to find out and divide by the corresponding energy denominator which is E0 0 minus EK0 keeping E0 0 as, as, as one from where it will be subtracted, okay. So that is important to note. So this can be very easily calculated. Remember when I did E0 1, I had a similar matrix element but both were psi 0 0 which is just an average value of V, right. Here I have actually a matrix element because the right and the left are different and in fact you know that if this is Hartree-Fock, these are determinants which are excited determinants like psi AR, psi ABRS and all that will come and we can of course evaluate this by Slater rules. So that is something that we will do and divide by this energy difference, all these energies are also known, remember, okay. We have already done this, this is of course sum of the orbital energies, these are sum of the orbital energies plus minus the orbitals which are occupied in the kth state, okay. So anyway that is immaterial, for a general case anyway these are known, okay, yes because of the denominator, yeah. So what is asking is that this also tells you a very interesting perturbation theory that you already know. For example, if I have a Hartree fog, then you expect the one determine one state whose energy is closest to the ground state of H0 to contribute more because if this is less, then this becomes more. So that is one of the reason they say the, the homo-lumo gap, if it is large, then there is a larger excitation to lumo. So that is a very approximate idea. It just means that there is more contribution to that from that state, okay. However, there is a Brillouin's theorem that you have to remember. So certain things will not happen because of Brillouin's theorem. See, I, I had to, I could eliminate this. So it just simplifies. See remember this term, this particular term, so anyway I mean these terms will further come when you go for second order, third order and so on. There will be more and more such terms will come. That is, that is one of the reasons that I, because already psi 0 0 is there, I need not include it. But please note that on normalization is anyway choice, I have been repeating. Finally my overall psi 0 is a linear combination of all states because Hartree-Fock is already included in psi 0 0. So I need not include them in the correction term. So that is the physical reason why it is not necessary. But there is a mathematical reason which brings in simplicity. So that is what we are discussing, okay. Physically anyway it is not required because I am only looking at correction. 
my overall web function includes Hartree-Fock anyway, okay. And I can always renormalize at the end. So, this is also not a big problem. I can always renormalize, all right. So, so the prescription to do a perturbation theory, again I repeat that you first know all the H naught eigenstates. So, you can do it for simple case, even one particle case, harmonic oscillator everywhere. So, if you have harmonic oscillator, harmonic oscillator and which is perturbed quadratic function, which is perturbed by a cubic function, let us say x cube term, okay, in the potential. You can use that as a, that as a perturbation. So, how will you do it? Then all these size k 0, 0 and size 0, 0 will be harmonic oscillator eigen functions, right. One of them will be ground state eigen function, these are excited states, so harmonic oscillator. Take the V as x cube, I put up by x cube. So, calculate the matrix element of x cube between the different states, between the ground state of harmonic oscillator and all the excited states, divide by the energy difference, that will give you the coefficient for the first order correction to the energy. So, if I give you a problem that there is a harmonic oscillator which is completely known, one particle. So, you have half k x square which is completely known and now my V of x is half k x square plus some lambda x cube, okay. Near, near about the, the, the uh, equilibrium. So, let us say this is a very small perturbation. Then what you will do is that up to V of x and kinetic energy your entire solutions are known. So, that becomes your H naught and this will become your V, okay. So, then what you can do is that you can apply this perturbation theory to first get the E naught 1. For E naught 1 it is very simple, your harmonic oscillator ground state eigen function and take lambda x cube, simply take the matrix element, average value, okay. For writing the first order correction, they are going to be combination of all harmonic oscillator eigen function, just as I have done it here. And each of these coefficients will be obtained by the matrix element of lambda x cube between ground state harmonic oscillator and excited states of harmonic oscillator. The harmonic oscillator means normal harmonic oscillator, H naught. That is what I have defined as H naught, divided by the energy difference. So, this is very simple. So, every state you simply calculate matrix element and take the energy difference. So, pictorially you can see the following way. This is my E naught 0. This is psi 0 0. Then I have got E 1 0, psi 1 0. These are known. Remember, all zeros are known and so on. E 2 0 and psi 2 0. So, pictorially now I am trying to calculate psi naught 1. I know that the psi naught 1 should not contain this because this is already there in my psi naught 0. So, psi naught 1 should contain by the intermediate normalization these two states. Let us say I have only three bases just to give an example. So, how do I calculate the coefficient of each of the states in expansion? So, this is important. So, it means I just take the V, whatever is the V between these two states first which is psi 0 0 psi 1 0. So, that is your matrix element, then divide by the energy denominator, whatever is the denominator here. Then you take V between these two states, divide by the denominator. If there are more states, V from these three states and so on. Always from this state, you go to one state, up, take the matrix element of V, take, divide by the energy denominator. And energy denominator must come in this form, that it is E 0 0 minus E k 0. Okay. So, you will get the combination coefficient and once you get the coefficient, you should be able to write psi naught 1. So, that is what we will do now. We will write psi naught 1. So, let me write psi naught 1 now as a linear combination of all eigenstates of H naught except psi 0 0, right. So, first you write sum over k naught equal to 0 and then write ck 1. So, I now have the C k 1 which is psi k 0 V psi 0 0 divided by E 0 0 minus E k 0 into psi k 0, correct. So, that is my coefficient multiplied by the H naught eigenstates. So, that becomes my psi naught 1. 
Is it clear? So, this is the number because this is the matrix element of V divided by the energy difference, everything is known here. So, you have to calculate one by one and then multiply, of course, by psi k0. So, that becomes your combination coefficients. So, basically, the whole purpose is I am trying to construct the first order perturbation correction to the wave function as a linear combination of what is already known. What is already known is the eigenstates of H0. So, I am trying to construct the this function as a combination of the eigenstates of H0 and I discover that the combination coefficient for each of the k can be written in this form. So, then I know and everything about psi 0 1. Of course, it is a long expression because it is a linear combination, but in principle I can calculate. In principle of course, the summation over k will be will be limited by my knowledge of the eigenstates of H0 because I told you I, if I have m basis then my knowledge is limited because I, have, I can get only MCN determinants, right. So, of course, that is there, but other than that this is an exact expression. We are yet not yet doing Hartree-Fock perturbation here. Of course, now I will do Hartree-Fock, H0 is Hartree-Fock and then see what are these psi k's, we will do that. So, there is still a lot to do. Having done this, now I can go back to E0 2. Remember my E0 2, I had written down the expression psi 0 0 V psi 0 1. Do you remember? Like E0 1 was psi 0 0 V psi 0 0. Any E0 n I wrote was psi 0 0 V psi 0 n minus 1. So, for E0 2, it is psi 0 0 V psi 0 1. So, psi 0 0 V psi 0 1. All I need to do now is a trivial task is to expand psi 0 1 as I have done here and push it here, correct. So, let us try to do that. Psi 0 1 has an expansion k, so that I must write before. Again, I hope all of you are comfortable in doing these exp expansions. Then I have psi 0 0 v. Now I have to write psi 0 1. So, how will you write? You can write these coefficients later and bring this here first because the integration is going to take place with psi k 0. This is a number c k 1. So, I will first write that psi k 0 and complete the integration and simply multiply by this number. Remember, this is just a number. So, I can multiply by this number or I can write the full thing psi k 0 V psi 0 0 divided by E 0 0 minus E k 0. It is just that I have written this in a different manner. This first, this later. I have switched it around because that is what that is immaterial, that is a number. It is a number I can go take it anywhere. And this looks very nice expression, I will just tell you how, why it looks so nice. Because you can see in between there is this psi k 0, psi k 0, sum over k, okay. Note that if this sum over k was complete, this by itself would have been an identity operator. However, it cannot be it written like this because you have E k 0 here. So, I cannot take this out separately and in any case this is k not equal to 0. So, do not interpret that as identity operator. That is the first thing I want to tell because that will be a mistake because the k is also here. I cannot sum just this, but it will be something which we will do. I think we have done that in 4 to 5 before if you remember recall. So, I am just repeating. So, so first to first to note however, that this quantity is a conjugate of this quantity, right. It is a complex because V is a Hermitian operator. So, if I take complex conjugate of this, the psi k 0 will come on the left, V will remain as it is, psi 0 0 will come on the right, okay. So, this is a conjugate of this, which means I can further write this expression as sum over k not equal to 0, psi 0 0 
V psi k zero mod square divided by E zero zero minus E k square. This becomes my E naught two. Okay, don't forget E naught one. However, E naught one was just psi zero zero V psi zero zero, right? So this is my E naught two I am doing already. E naught one was very simple. Psi zero zero V psi zero zero. Instead of one, it was zero. Okay, all of you agree here. I mean, those who have done four to five, this is just a revision, but I think it is worth doing because now we will do the actual Hartree-Fock perturbation, but it is worth doing. Note a very important point about these formulae. This denominator is always positive because it is mod square. So it doesn't matter what is the value of this. This into its complex conjugate is always positive. I hope all of you know. Any number times its conjugate is always positive, right? So a into a star, it's always positive, and the and the denominator is always negative because this is the lowest eigenstate of H naught. These are the higher eigenstates of H naught. K not equal to zero, right? And k, of course, if k equal to zero would have been there, it would have been disaster. Okay, this would have been a singular infinity. So anyway, I have a, I have removed that. Okay, so now you know why intermediate normalization is required further. Okay, so I have removed it for much simplification. So it's only k not equal to zero. So this quantity for all k, each k, is negative. Right? Numerator is positive, denominator is negative. So it is always negative. So the entire quantity is always negative. It's a very interesting result that we get qualitatively. So what we are saying that I have no idea what is first order energy. First order correction to the ground state energy is psi 0, 0, V psi 0, 0. I cannot say if it is positive or negative. In the context of hartree fock perturbation, I had already told that I am least bothered because orbital energy sum plus this was hartree fock energy anyway. So I am not bothered whether this is positive or negative. But the important thing is that after I do the correlation, when I am going to do the correlation, this will be the first correction. I will write what is psi k0 in terms of determinants later, but regardless of what it is, it is always negative. So what does it mean? It means when I do a second order MP2 correction, the hartree fock energy goes down, which means the energy has improved or it has gone worse, it has improved because originally hartree fock was always greater than or equal to E0. However, there is a question. How much negative? It might have gone down. See, I mean that is a question that we are not bothered. So E00 plus E01 is of course Hartree Fock energy. And that is greater than e equal to exact E0 for sure. When I am doing, when I am adding E02, Again, this I am talking in terms of Hartree Fock perturbation. E02, this is certainly less than or equal to E Hartree Fock. So, you may think that it is going towards E0, which is generally right, but it might be overcorrected. You understand what is overcorrection? So, it may actually go down further. So, if this is E Hartree Fock and this is E0, then after I correct with E02, it may even go down. It only says it is negative, but there is no upper bound on this that this should be greater than or equal to E0. There is no upper bound. There is an upper bound, however, on this. I hope you know why now. The reasons are different. This is Hartree Fock energy. So, up to this point, I can write it as a Hamiltonian expectation value with respect to psi 00. zero. Because H0, when I put H0 here, it is E00. When I put V here, it is E01. Add these two, it can be written as a matrix element. It is a Hamiltonian expectation value with respect to some state, psi 00. So that is always greater than or equal to E02, E0, E0. But when I am adding E02, I cannot write like this. So there is no Rayleigh Reed's variation principle. So this, this result of upper bound I am getting because not because of the perturbation theory, but because of my original Rayleigh Reed's variation method because this can be written 
as an expectation value of the Hamiltonian. When I do the E naught 2, I have lost that variation method because it is no longer can be written as an expectation value of Hamiltonian because E naught 2 has very complicated terms, it is not expectation value. So I cannot write this as an expectation value, there is no rally rates principle. I can only say that the E naught 2 is negative, but there is no upper bound theorem. I hope it is clear, so it can go down. The fact that E naught 1 had an upper bound property was not because of any reasons of perturbation, because I have no idea of what is E naught 1, positive, negative, but because of the fact that added to this, it generates me a matrix a expectation value of Hamilton and that is always bound because of Rayleigh Reed's principle. So that is really a variation principle, okay. Let me erase and write down first the formula again. So this is something that I know, sorry. So I am writing down everything now where E0, 0 is lower than E1, 0, etc. So they are ordered in this manner, okay. This is for H now. Then we want to calculate E01, but before I do that, let me write E0, that is trivially psi 0, 0, H0, psi 0, 0. So that is the first formula which trivially comes out. Then we write down the ground state first order correction to the energy. So that is psi 0, 0, V psi 0, 0, such that E naught 0 plus E naught 1 is psi 0, 0, H psi 0, 0, which when I do Hartree-Fock perturbation is my Hartree-Fock energy because this is Hartree-Fock, okay, by definition and by rayleigh its principle, this is greater than or equal to E0, okay. Then the third formula that we just generated was E0-2 is psi 0, 0, sum over k not equal to 0, psi 0, 0, V psi k 0, mod square divided by E0, 0, minus H. And just E0, 2 itself is always negative, just E0, 2 itself. So it will certainly depress the value from E0, 0 plus E0, 1, but how much I do not know. Normally, of course, when I do MP2, I will come to that because I have to analyze what are psi k zeros then. Then we see that it does not go beyond exact energy, but actually recovers about 60 to 6, 7, 70 percent of the entire correlation energy. So the difference, 60 to 70 percent of the difference, it actually recovers. So it does not go beyond, below, it does not actually overcorrect. So that is a good thing. So this will eventually become our formula for MP2. And this is the first correction to the correlation energy, all right. Of course, to write MP2, I have to now go back to Hartree Fock perturbation, where H0 is some of the Fock operator, write them down in terms of determinants that we will do tomorrow and write the final form of the Hartree Fock perturbation. This is a more general perturbation theory that I have done. I would also mention uh, what I did in the 4 to 5 class that there is something called resolvent. I cannot take this as a projection operator, but there is something called resolvent or not which is defined as sum over k not equal to 0, psi k 0, psi k 0. So this is like a projection operator divided by E 0, 0 minus E 0, okay. So this sum over k, everything summed up because k comes only here. If you, if you allow this, if you understand this resolvent, then the entire E naught 2 can be written without the sum over k naught 0, psi 0, 0, v r naught v psi 0, 0, very simple. Note that our e naught 1 was psi 0, 0, v psi 0, 0. Now I have written e naught 2 also with psi 0, 0, psi 0, 0, except that instead of v, 
it has become V R not V. So, in a way you can see the similarity of the E not 1 formula. Obviously, there has to be 2 V because it is second order perturbation. So, that also you should notice that first order I have 1 V, second order I must have 2 V. For the wave function also the same thing, first order correction to the wave function had only 1 V in the numerator. It has 2 V, but they do not come together. The 2 V's are spaced by the resolvent, that is the whole idea, okay. So, essentially what is happening pictorial is the following, that I go from psi 0, 0 through the V, I go to one higher state of H naught, then again through V, I come back to psi 0, 0, divide by the energy denominator each time. So, if you look at the picture, the picture that I drew E naught 0, E 1 0, etcetera. I, I gave you a picture for psi, psi 0 1, first order correction. Now, I am giving a picture for E naught 2. What you do is that you go from psi, this is psi 0 0, go from psi 0 0 through V to psi 1 0, right. Then come back to psi 0 0 again. If you, if you interpret these, these functions, let us say k equal to 1, what do you do? Psi 0 0 V psi, psi 1 0 back to psi 0 0. So, you are going to psi 1 0, come back to psi 0 0. Each time you do that, take energy denominator. Then you do the next one, go here, come back here, take the energy denominator. So, this is the pictorial way of looking at it. While going here, there is a matrix element, while coming back, there is a matrix element. Matrix element is just the complex conjugate when I come back. It is like a scattering process. So, I go here, come back here and each time I take energy denominator, keep doing for all states. So, this is the way to remember. So, each time you go, there is a matrix element. Each time you come back, there is a matrix element. So, you are always going from psi 0 0, coming back to psi 0 0. When you do E naught 1, you did not do anything like going back. You started from psi 0 0, immediately was in psi 0 0 with V. So, basically, if I write E naught 1 in the same process, all these were not required. I started from here and come back to here without going anywhere. Here I am going up and then coming, it is a ladder. I am going up and coming back. But eventually of course, for all E0, you have to start from psi 0, 0 and come back to psi 0, 0, remember that is important. When I did psi 0, 1, I told you it is a combination of various states, that is for psi 0, 1. But if I put that in E0, 2, remember this is a combination. But this combination is such that when I expand this, I come back to psi 0, 0. So, that is exactly what is happening because each of the coefficients has this number. So, eventually I start from here, come back to one of the psi k 0 and back to psi 0, 0. So, all energy correction, in fact, when I do E naught 3, E naught 4, everything will have the same structure. I, we will not do that, but it will become more and more complicated because I have only one, two scattering here. Quite clearly you can see if I have third order energy, there has to be three scattering. How to do that? You may wonder how to do that. I will show you one process because I am not going to do third order correction. How do I do three? Tell me. I go from one to here, then I will go from here to here. There is another V, then come back straight. Because I have odd number now. In fact, that will be reflected in my expression. So, all these expressions are much easily understood by diagrams. In fact, I am not immediately going to diagrammatic picture, but I just want to convince you that what Feynman said, the diagrams are extremely good pictorial representations of the algebra. The algebra is actually you know, unnecessarily you get lost. Diagrams are very easy. If I tell you this diagram, you will be actually able to write the matrix element. The first one will be psi 1 0 v psi, 1, psi 0 0 multiplied by psi 2 0 0 v psi, psi 1 0, then psi 2 0 back to psi 0 0 or psi 0 0 v psi 2 0. I am coming back because there has to be only 3 for E naught 3. So, actually all such processes together will give you a contribution to E naught 2, E naught 3, E naught 4. So, pictorially the uh, diagrammatically the uh, perturbation theory can be very nicely understood. In fact, all these things that are done will be actually converted to diagrammatics and that became what is called diagrammatic perturbation theory or MBPT, many body perturbation theory. We'll, we will not do too much about it, but I want to convince you that actually diagrams are much more easy way to pictorially fathom 
what is happening in the perturbation theory and understand the process, okay. Uh, if you understand that eventually for all energy, I have to start from here and come back here by the scattering process and that is exactly what has happened. Through the resolvent, I have a much easier way of writing. I do not have to write the denominator, the denominator is involved in the resolvent. Resolvent has, resolvent does not have a property of projection operator, I am again repeating. So, you may wonder what are the properties of resolvent, so we will discuss that. If we do R naught square, what will happen and so on, yeah, we can discuss those questions and some of these we discussed in the previous class. So, that is an ind independently, it is a good algebra, all right. I think today I will stop here and now actually put H naught as some of the Fock operators and find out what are the psi k zeros, what will be the psi k zeros and then calculate this. When I do this, I will require the final Slater rule that I told you. That is the matrix element of psi 0, 0, Hartree Fock with doubly excited determinant. That will, that will come in. So, tomorrow's class, I will start with that. I will start with that final Slater rule. Again, like the first two Slater rules, I will only simply write the expression. We will understand the expression and then go back to this and try to complete it.